Good morning, everyone, for once in a while, and welcome to a uh, special stream of my last week of holiday. And I have to get uh, used to waking up early and doing some work. So, in the interest of uh, getting back to the saddle, I am going to be doing some drawing in the mornings. Uh, the first Activity for today is going to be uh, gesture drawing cats, which uh, some of you might find uh, interesting, or maybe you might find the uh, rambling going on interesting. In any case, here we have a cheetah. As usual, we are going to have. Um, Tails over there. We should have about um, 30 seconds for the first cat images. And we did. And we have uh, another cheetah. This one is sitting. If you have watched some of my uh, gesture drawing streams before, uh, you might notice a slight difference. This time I am drawing everything on a uh, single canvas. I tried doing this one time when um, we were doing just when I was doing just drawings on a um, uh, this is a puma as a warm up for a, a collaboration and it was uh, actually quite fun the um, the software we used for that uh, was not compat compatible with the uh, idea of. Uh, them as I traditionally have, so breaking up um, each drawing to a its own layer. Keeping the layers separated is uh, fun in in a certain way. Oh, this is just a kitten. Keeping the layers separated is fun, but um, for one, it's it's difficult to display the results, and for another. Well, um, it was surprisingly fun playing everything, everything on one page. So this time what I am going to do, uh, two kittens lying on each other. What I'm going to do is that I have layers for each um, time amount. So there's one layer for the 30 seconds um, gestures, then there's uh, another one for the one minute, and so on. Ah, only got one face, face in for this one. Uh, here's a tiger. Seems to be at once uh, having fun, but also tired. So he's, uh, he's yawning in the water. And as we know, um, Tigers do enjoy being in the water. Uh, not all cats do. Domestic cats have a stereotype of not enjoying the water, but this is also not universal. Some of them do actually like it quite a lot. No? This is four kittens. Uh, in my experience, when it comes to domestic cats, uh, it's more of a question of how they have been um, introduced to water. So if you try to force a domestic cat into, a, into the water, um, they will get mad, they will be angry at you and the water, and they will hate water. And of course, if they have a fun experience with water, playing it, that sort of thing, then you are much more likely to have a cat that enjoys being in water. So, a question of uh, acculturation. This one is uh, another tiger, doing a bit of a stretch here. Uh, lion kittens, maybe? 
there's, uh, there's three of them. They are uh, obviously large cats, but they are um, quite young ones. They have these, you know, spots to them, so they kind of look like leopards, but not really. They have a, a very lion-like base color. Has been a while since I've done any gesture drawing, so I'm a bit out of practice. And uh, for another thing, I usually do gesture drawings of humans. Which is uh, conceptually somewhat uh, different. You might notice that I am not um, doing as good of a job, perhaps, of um, starting with the gesture, as I might have done sometimes in the past. Uh, this might be because I'm drawing cats, which I'm not um, that used to. Or it might be because uh, uh, I'm just out of practice. So here I'm trying to get, um, get some kind of a gesture line going. And as you might already imagine, this is an image with two cats. One of them is menacing the other. Uh, they are both almost uh, exactly the same color. Where do I start? The eternal question. I would make some sort of a, a dwarf fortress uh, menaces with spikes of something or another joke, but I haven't actually played any dwarf fortress in, in years, so my memory of uh, dwarf fortress jokes is relatively limited. And this is um, either a leopard or a jaguar. I think a leopard has um, relatively small paws. As I recall, the way to differentiate between the uh, spotted kitties is how big their um, the spots are. I uh, know how, how large their uh, uh, paws are. Leopards have huge ones. Now here we are getting into the cat drawing experience still uh, not nearly enough time to actually actually draw one but uh, not quite as confused as before um, uh, oh hello Attenborough welcome uh, no this one was uh, was a normal you know uh, sand colored cat so um, I think probably probably a normal leopard uh, um, I think snow leopards have quite large um, paws as well so my typology of identifying uh, spotted cats by the size of their paws might actually not be that um, well founded uh, this is a lion of course as you might have uh, intuited by this uh, mane that I'm throwing him. This is a domestic cat, just sleeping. As puffy cheeks, as cats often do, and has curled himself up quite nicely. And there's a uh, hind leg here. Which only has, I think cats only have four back toes, 
The last time that I interacted with a cat, I was not able to find the uh, the big toe. I was only able to find the thumb. Now oh, here's another kitten. This kitten is looking up at us, which is particularly difficult to draw, of course. I think somehow um, even difficult poses are somehow less um, stressful for me when, when drawing cats. Maybe there's, um, you know, with humans you immediately notice um, when something is uh, deeply wrong. With cats, this might not be the case. And that was pretty much it. You can't see the tail. Oh, hello. Uh, chatting about leopard paws. Well, um, I'm not an expert on leopard paws, actually. Um, not really. So it might well be that... Uh, the differences are much smaller than um, than I've thought. And uh, welcome, Sir Trenea. We are, we have now moved up into uh, two minutes. Uh, no, uh, five minute gestures. So this is already a five minute one. This is a kitten. This is a, a motivational poster. Mm. His shoulders have to be turned up. He's, he's hanging from the uh, from the rope. That's what's happening. So I can't really see what his his lower arm must be doing something like this, and then his upper arm obviously must be connected to his um, to his shoulders. So it has to be something like this. And there's. Um, Kind of a tabby, tabby pattern. Probably not the thing that I should be um, starting with when drawing a cat, but uh, I am having fun. Mm, this is the point at which I or anyone else drawing. Um, should really do their best to avoid um, symbolic drawing. So symbolic drawing is that kind of thing like um, small children will draw, you tell them to draw a, uh, a an eye and they'll draw something like a hieroglyph. It somehow comes naturally um, to us, at least as literate people, but uh, it's uh, not a good way to draw things. If you are actually drawing things, you should try to emulate what you are seeing and not really drawing what you think you are seeing. This, of course, might sound particularly galling, as uh, I just finished describing what the uh, anatomy of this cat should be doing. But... Uh, should be doing and uh, just drawing it as if, as if it were uh, quite the different things. I have never actually lived in a country where um, motivational posters would have been a thing. I only know them from, you know, foreign popular culture or I have never lived in a time period where they were a thing. Um, it might be that there might have been some in Europe as well um, in the past. Who knows? Um, I know them as something from American um, TV and films. Again, I think um, detailing in the, in the rope is not perhaps what I should be doing at this uh, point of... Uh, the the process and you know taking it taking it easy makes makes things feel feel easier and yes i think bro not even in an office building or anything 
I have not once seen a motivational poster in nature. Um, at office buildings where I have worked, we've had um, a lot of, you know, um, calendars. But my office um, at this moment, of course, I am not there. But I'm sure it has not uh, materially changed uh, since last I was there. Um, we have two current calendars and uh, and two historical ones, so um, out of date ones. The out of date ones are just used as uh, wall decoration. They just hang there, look nice. So you can just leave the uh, the most aesthetic looking one just hanging out. The current ones. Hmm, Twelve seconds to go. Stage right four looks quite kind of weird, but uh, maybe it's just a scale problem. Maybe it's kind of doing a, a weird pose. So uh, the second five minute pose. This is another kitten. This is um, a kitten that is trying to look ferocious, not uh, doing a particularly good job at it. I think. But he is making an effort. I wonder if he's jumping. He's one of those um, extremely brightly lit images where you can't really tell if it's um, if the cat is interacting with the with the ground or not. Yeah. Okay, something like this. I think he's uh, scrunching his nose a little bit. And of course he is making, opening his mouth wide. I can't actually see any of, it, of his teeth, but I'm giving him some form thanks to make him look, look um, let's say, slightly, slightly more ferocious. Again, not, not necessarily the thing you should be doing. I don't know, that looks, looks weird. Uh, not necessarily the kind of thing you should be doing while... while gesture drawing not necessarily the point of the exercise but uh, who cares having fun I think I should actually um, you know start regularly drawing cats as gesture activities it's uh, much less much less stress If you are wondering, I am, of course, uh, drawing in Krita, the freeware software as usual. But uh, um, what the brush that I am using is the uh, the hard pencil, number two pencil. Um, no. Comment? A cat drawing mannequin. Hmm. I've never seen one. Not that, I, not that I know of, although I imagine that uh, since cats have been uh, fairly commercialized in our society, that you would be able to find something like that somewhere. So here's his, his thumb. A bit up here. Um, I have been enjoying the, the hard pencil recently. It's... Uh, 
lends itself well to this kind of, you know, um, quick sketching. It has uh, has a sort of an aggressive feel to it. So it feels um, easier to. Uh, draw quickly with it and have this kind of, you know, jittery uh, line work. The kind of jittery line, line work for me is kind of a crutch to draw aggressively. I make a conscious effort to use my um, upper arm for this kind of um, jittery and, you know, long straight lines. Both of which, uh, I think, as a consequence of that, uh, I find very useful for um, this kind of quick, quick drawing. The jittery line is um, also relatively good, or at least I enjoy using it for um, here. Yeah human or in this case cat. This is the 10 minute pose. There is uh, a grey domestic cat in it. Actually I'm just going to make a bit more of an effort to construct this cat instead of just gesture drawing it. It's doing that uh, sphinx pose uh, facing away from the camera. You have its head here, it's coming down to the neck, and then of course the back curves up again, something like this, and then of course it curves back down again, and then you have um, you have the tail. What I'm doing here is um, something uh, that I wanted to demonstrate in a, another session this week. Um, I doubt that I have... Uh, I, I think I have um, developed this method independently, but I'm sure a lot of people use it as well. Um, that I call... Cross-section. Um, cross-sectional drawing. And for example, when I have the, the tail uh, coming closer to the camera, I will draw these you know, sections of the cross-section that I can then combine to keep this sort of uh, sense of volume to the structure. And on the other side, oh, hello, Velek. I see you've uh, found my pickle face. How appropriate of you. You are yourself somewhat of a grey cat, aren't you? Something like this. And if I wanted to draw a cross, uh, you know, a contour line, it would go something like this. This cat is sitting or laying down in some, some grass. Uh, so there is actually a relatively finite amount of um, detail that we see about how it is interacting with the ground. There's some, some fur visible here. Mm, that's basically it. So, um, Next up is a contour again. So again, this is sort of uh, I'm I'm sort of drawing the um, cross section of the uh, neck of the cat in a very faint line, so that I have some idea where the shoulder of the cat is. So again, if we were to draw a a contour of the um, entire back here, the shoulder is going to be somewhere around here, and I think that it is bunched up quite a bit. Um, he is shrugging 
as he's lying down. I think cats always do that. Um, I think the shadow comment about shadows is something to do with the contour lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is an excellent way to uh, think about con uh, about shading. If you want to go full um, full effort, you can even um, you know draw sort of sort of uh, you know assisting lines. Like for example, you can draw something and then think that the uh, uh, light is coming from this way, and if you start imagining a round area as as sort of facets, uh, then of course this facet is going to be entirely dark. This one is going to be completely white, and these ones are going to be, you know, maybe a little bit um, more shadowy than the the facet that is uh, entirely against the light. That's uh, you know one of those things that I know how to do, and I often think that I should do more, but. Um, Let's say that my uh, my drawing method is um, involved enough as it is, and uh, I'm uh, you know kind of a lazy drawer. I want to have uh, things finished rather than uh, working on them forever. And when I work on things forever, I usually just end up you know not actually managing. Uh, to finish anything. So I think the um, the gesture of the cat is relatively finished. There isn't there aren't really any you know items or things like that in the um, in the shot. I'm going to try to you know suggest some of these. Leaves, fallen leaves that are on the ground, but uh, I'm not going to do them. It's not something that I'm particularly good at. Drawing plants in general is actually something that I should uh, practice a lot more. Um, there might be some, you know, tree drawing tools on this uh, Esther website. I'm going to have to take a look at that. That would be something that would be um, useful for me. Uh, I think that I am now more or less done with this uh, with the hard pencil. I'm going to switch to the soft pencil, which seems to have uh, changed a little in the in the time since since I've last used this. Uh, there's a new uh, version of Krita out, and I just installed it yesterday. So there, there are going to be some uh, differences that I am not really familiar with. Hmm. Where do we have highlights? Actually, you know, I'm going to show something. Um, Here we are kind of um, going backwards. So I have shaded the entire cat. Um, this is more, I think this is more of a, a soft shading method. Um, I was taught it by a, uh, let's say, higher level um, hobby, hobby artist. Um, and the thing is that instead of trying to draw the shadows, you shade everywhere, and then you erase where you want your highlights to be. I have uh, enjoyed this method. Um, it does feel sort of um, you know, intuitive. So I think that it has some... Um, I, think, I think that you lose some... You know, method methodology when you do it this way, but you know, for drawing for fun, it's a it's a good system. 
There's some highlights there. Uh, this isn't a particularly dramatically lit image. It's uh, an outside photo and the cat is, you know, just there. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think you are on the right track. So this is sort of, um, again, this idea with the imagining the facets. I think a part of it is going to be that it's somehow more... Probably, you're right, that it's it's more intuitive to imagine where the light is going. But as the uh, other effect, that um, in this way you are adding small areas or removing small areas instead of um, adding large ones. So that might be what makes it uh, somehow feel easier. And the cat doesn't actually have any, you know, deep shadows, and uh, this is not dark enough to uh, stack, so I will have to get an actual dark color. Oh, my problem. Um, no, I am out of time, but I am going to do what I was going to show anyway. Mm-hmm. I am going to select the color from this layer. Control Alt. No, it doesn't work. Still doesn't stack. It does have to be have to be darker. No, add a light. You know, um, third value to to the cat's colors. Mm, not there. Then a bit of um... yeah, I think that's a that's a nice cat. And then uh, we are really getting out of the uh, gesture drawing concept here. Hmm. Oh, I'm still in um, in eraser mode. How unfortunate. You know, let's put in some, uh, not quite this dark, but let's put in some, you know, yellowish and uh, and greenish color here as the as the background. I'm going to make the, um, the suggested background a little bit, um, you know, darker here around um, where the cat is at its darkest as well. Hmm. Maybe something like this. You know, just um, to have a kind of a consistent aesthetic. So, something like this. Hello, Buni Rapuni. Is that forehead inner as your reference? Yes, it is forehead inner. Uh, let's say uh, the uh, you know art art teacher uh, aesthetic. The reference docker is as actually a, a you know third party party plugin. Uh, what it lets you do is instead of having a, a reference somewhere here, somewhere around here, for example, so that it doesn't move when you pan, or it moves away from the um, view when you pan. If you have the reference Docker plugin, you can have a reference that stays uh, where it is. 
and you can uh, um, yes you can the uh, Uh, the indicator doesn't show, but you can um, get, you know, color references out of the uh, reference image. So if you wanted to, you could uh, set up a palette, and every time you want the uh, shirt image, if, you're, if you were, for example, drawing comics or something like that, this would be extremely useful for it. You could just set up um, a palette, have the, you know, skin colors, eye colors, um, hair colors, uh you know clothing colors that sort of thing just uh immediately available and the reference dock uh, might empty itself if you click reset view or it might center itself i'm not going to check now but uh the way that i use it it always has something in it so i uh pulled out my in-app image as not to uh have anything particularly distracting there so that was the gesture portion of this strain. Thank you for the kind words, uh, paper bag. I am going to... What am I going to do? I'm going to cut away the gesture drawing cap from the title. And I am going to clip the recording. I'm going to upload this as...